Hey, what's up everybody? Cub Fan here, and welcome to episode 180 of Cub Fan's Minecraft Let's Play. I'm just sitting down here, watching the minecart bounce back and forth, making sure everything is running okay, and it looks like it is, so that's good. All of our farms are collecting. Uh, we need to make our wheat farm automatic soon, uh, so that's that's one of the things we have to do still. But let's go ahead and get on up here. Uh, I worked a little bit on Zera Zera uh, during a live stream we did on Tuesday night. Uh, so let's go ahead and go out there and see what we we got from that and also what we're going to do today. So, uh, we'll get up here. Do I have any pearls on me? I do. Nice. Alright, let's get over here. So one of the things I want to build today is the jousting area over that way. We'll have like some more some more stands like this uh, that the villagers can be put into. Uh, we'll probably make it on the opposite side over here. Over here for like the jousting area. Just a, just a small little area here. But yeah. Put that there, and then let me show you what we got over here. We added on since last time. Just hop on over here. There we go. Okay, so this is the new stuff over here. So I made like a little um, little theater, basically. Um, so we got, you know, some quartz slabs, some sea lanterns for lighting. Uh, then we got like a little little stand area around here. And I think it looks, it looks pretty good, I think. Uh... Also got like a nice backdrop. We could put some banners on that or something. Uh, we got some some red sandstone mixed in, and then we got a future changing room. We could put down here for like the actors. So like the idea would be that they they get dressed here and then they pop up on the side here and then sneak in the back onto the stage right here. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think it, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I got some input for some from some people in the uh, the Twitch chat when we were streaming that helped me make this. So thank you to those people. Also, there's a random stair there. I'm not sure why that is. Let's get that out of here. There we go. Yep, you'll also see... We got some other stuff here. Uh, so let's just get down here real quick. Up this side here. So I want to make like a little path around here. Uh, around here so you can sort of look down onto the, onto the stage area. I think that'd be look pretty cool. Uh, sort of like a... I don't know, like, there's a, there's a couple of stadiums that do this, like, for instance, like, uh, Wrigley Field has, like, the, uh, the, uh, the rooftops surrounding it, where people look down onto the baseball field, it's sort of like that type of feel, but with just, like, a, like, a pathway, so people who didn't necessarily pay could still sort of watch the play from a distance, anyway, that's the idea there, um, so that's that, that's the, uh, the theater right there, and then, looks like we got some skeletons that burned up, but we got... We got sort of an outline of the enchantment shop, which is going to go right here. Um, so the idea is that there could be like a enchantment, uh, customizable enchantment uh, area right here with the enchantment table right there, bookshelves around, and then book storage back here for like enchanted books. And then we'd have like a villager trader, like a priest right here that could sell us bottles of enchanting. At least that's the idea that I had uh, during the stream. I'm still not quite sure about the layout though, so we'll have to see about that. And then of course for the rest of the orange section we got a hotel that needs to be built here with a pool in the back. Uh, we got a library that needs to be built over there. We got an observation point that needs to be built up there. Uh, as well as a music shop over right here. So we need a music shop here as well. So still quite a bit to do in Zera Zera for this orange section. So I think we should go ahead and get started here uh, with some building. Alright everybody, so we're going to start off with the jousting area today, so I'm going to build up a little bit of a stand section here, uh, similar to that one right there, and then we'll have sort of like the actual jousting area, just be like an area with like a fence down the center, uh, we'll have, let's say we'll have like a starting area here, and then on the opposite side we'll have one somewhere like down this, in this area here. And the idea is you'd be you'd charge at each other, and then in the center you'd meet here, close to where the crowd can see you. And yeah, that'll be the uh, the jousting area. All right, everyone. So I've built the stands up a little bit. I'm just going to use the same pattern that I used over on that one and the other one uh, for the testing and jumping facilities. So this whole area is going to be like a little horse. Um, I don't know what to call it, like a horse uh, training ground, testing ground, proving ground, something like that. Um, and we're, of course, going to have, you know, some fence here to try and keep some of the villagers in, obviously. That would be useful. 
So we'll go around here with some another brick. I think we might need a little bit more. But yeah, looking good there. Uh, so now we can go ahead and get some dirt out. Yeah, fantastic. All right. And like I said, yeah, we're going to start them off on this side close to the, the, the crowd. On the other side, we'll be a little bit further away. And maybe we have some uh, some banners up here or maybe some, uh, I don't know, maybe something else. Maybe like a big, some paintings or something. Uh, paintings of like potential match matchups or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and put down the jungle fence first though. So let's see, we probably want it to be about here. I'm using jungle wood fence because it fits with the jungle wood theme. As you can tell, this is all jungle wood. And everything over there, jungle wood, jungle wood. It's all jungle wood. <laughs> all jungle wood everywhere. Okay. Let's put this down. There we go. I think that's a good length. And we need to extend it a little bit down this way. I think that's pretty good. Maybe a few more. There we are. All right. So I think that's pretty good. And then I'll put some dirt down here. You know, clear out some area, especially close to the track. I want that to definitely be dirt. And then it'll sort of tail off as it gets closer to uh, the stands and to the... Uh, jump test facility there so yeah I'll clear out some uh, area here make it all nice and pretty we'll also put something down here for the horses to attach the horses to while uh, while contestants are waiting so let's go ahead and do that now alright guys so as I'm working on this uh, I want to tell a story about myself and my experience uh, with a particularly laid-back park ranger at Yellowstone National Park uh, so Yellowstone National Park is a national park in the US uh, has a ton of different wildlife and animals and geysers and it's actually located the whole park is actually part of a super volcano which is pretty cool uh, but this involves myself a bear a wolf and a particularly laid-back park ranger so one night uh, on Yellowstone it was about sunset I was looking out over a uh, there was like a little valley and then like a hill on the other side and I was looking through some binoculars and I saw a wolf attacking a bear on on one side, and basically it was a it was a young bear being teased by a wolf, uh, which sometimes happens according to the park ranger who was standing beside me. Um, so yeah, it was it was kind of interesting to see that like that wolf and bear, not really fight, but sort of that dynamic that they had going on. Like the wolf would run up and attack, pretend to attack the bear, and the bear would charge, and the wolf would go back and the bear would charge again. Uh, and there was also a herd of buffalo nearby. Uh, buffalo are huge, massive, massive creatures. Um, they're typically, they, they eat plants, but they, uh, they, they, they are territorial, so they will, like, charge people if they're, if they feel threatened. So anyway, there was a herd of buffalo nearby, and, um, yeah, the bear and wolf were getting kind of close to the herd of buffalo, and, and w in one particular instance, they got a little too close, and they caused a stampede. So there's a stampede in front of me. They were charging down the valley, sort of toward me. And at the same time, I heard this click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack behind me, right? So I'm like, wow, that's pretty loud. I better turn around and see what it is. And behind me, charging down the road from, like it was from the, from the right-hand side here, charging down the road was a full-grown, like, Two, three thousand pound adult buffalo, just straight up charging down the road like it's like it's a normal everyday thing that, that you'd see in your life. Um, so at this point, I feel like my life's a little bit in danger, especially when I see a couple more buffalo, the same full-grown adult buffalo type, uh, charging down the road behind uh, the, the the first buffalo. So you know, I hear I hear this rumbling, you know, and I turn to the park ranger and I'm like, um. Should we be moving right now? Because these buffalo are enormous and could trample us to death uh, if we're not careful. And he just, he turns to me with this face. I'll never forget it. Totally blank expression. Lifts his shoulder up, puts both hands out to the side and just goes, eh. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? You know, if we, if we get trampled by a buffalo, eh, it's all right. I, I lived a good life, you know. And I'm like, are you serious, guy? <laughs> we are in serious danger. And he's like, eh. Uh, so yeah, he was <laughs> he was uh, a little bit uh, too laid back in my opinion, but luckily we were not trampled. Um, it really is exhilarating though, being that close to an animal that big. I have to say, I mean, it really gets your heart pumping. You you are really aware of your surroundings at that point. Um, <laughs> it it was it was an awesome experience, but uh, slightly uh, 
slightly intimidating to uh, to be not top of the food chain. Uh, well, you're still technically top of the food chain, but yeah, you're you're sort of powerless against individual buffalo on your own with no weapons. <laughs> so yeah, that's my story about Yellowstone National Park. It's a great place. Uh, I think I think the park ranger knew that the buffalo were not going to charge us, but still a little bit a uh, little bit harrowing having you know one group of buffalo charging from the front and then a stealth ninja buffalo from behind uh, sneaking up on you and surprising you. So yeah, that's my story. Uh, <laughs> we also had some other great experiences like uh, buffalo crossing. We were basically stuffing it, stuck in a giant traffic jam for like three hours. <laughs> Because buffalo would not get out of the, out of the road, and you can't just you know honk your horn because that might anger them. You can't go around them because there's you know thousands of them blocking the road. You just gotta wait it out, wait it out, and then uh, yeah, hopefully you don't hit any buffalo dung, <laughs> buffalo chips on the way uh, on the way through the uh, through the uh, the wasteland of of buffalo poop <laughs> whenever you uh, get out of it. So. Yeah, that's my uh, story about Yellowstone. Uh, great place if you ever have a chance to visit there. I highly recommend it. It's awesome. So, yep, that's my story. I'm going to continue to work on this. And, yeah, I'll see you guys once this place is done. Okay, everybody. So, I'm going to go ahead and take out this horse here. Show you the horse uh, jousting area here. So, let's just put some diamond horse armor on him. Pop this off. And then we'll get going here. So, let's hop on him. Or her. I don't think we actually have a name for this horse yet. Nope, not quite yet. But yeah, let's go ahead and get over here. Right off into the uh, into the horse testing area. All right, so I went ahead and finished this area up. Um, so you'll see we got some more dirt on the ground. So let me show you around here. So here it says jousting across there and banners. I uh, made some custom banners that way. Uh, then we have you know like the uh, the official. This is where the official stands. Uh, let me just show you this real quick. Let me hop off here. Hook him up there. So that's like a little horse post you can have in case you get like a queue of horses here. You want to joust against somebody. So yeah, this is like the uh, the judge right here. Um, so he has this lamp up here indicating when both competitors can go. So whenever he says go, he flicks that light, they see it, and then they start to joust. So that's what that is. And then he has... Two levers on each side here to indicate the winner. So this would be the winner on this side right here. This would be the winner on this side over here. So that's the uh, like official booth right there. Of course, we have the jousting right there. We got some seating on the side uh, for some more officials like to uh, to observe the uh, the joust. Jousting area itself. Let me just get this guy off here. As I said, we have this little queue right here where you can queue your horse and then. Once you're actually in here, you wait until you can see the lamp go on, and then you just press forward, and you should be able to get through. Yep, there we go. Joust right here, and yeah, you get over here, and then you can do the same thing on this side. So you just wait till you see the lamp. Once you see the lamps light up, press forward, joust right here against your competitor, and then the whole process starts again. So I think it's a pretty good area. Uh, I like the way that it's sort of like concentrated around the the main part here if you're actually jousting against somebody um, but yeah that's the uh, that's the jousting area done I'm pretty happy with it uh, there could be a, a couple other things I might add here but uh, yeah I like it the way it is right now so yeah let's go ahead and uh, continue to work on this uh, Zera Zera so let's go out and I think I want to work on the enchantment shop right now all right everybody so I want to go ahead and tear down what we have so far of the enchantment uh, shop I wasn't really too happy with this on the stream uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to tear it all down and restart, basically. Um, it's going to be in the same area here, but uh, it was too small and it didn't have the functionality that I wanted. So, yeah, we're going to make it more of a more of an open floor layout. Uh, combined with uh, some areas to put some villagers. And it should be good, yeah. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do that right now. Alright guys, so I went ahead and changed up the design of this enchantment shop a little bit. So instead of the previous design, we're now going to have a sort of like a purple wall almost. And then we'll have villagers back here in this area. So this will be like the counter where you buy stuff from them. Uh, we'll also have a pressure plate here. This will uh, basically activate the enchantment station back here. There'll be a wall here where this andesite is. 
And then on this side we'll have, you know, some different enchanted items on the walls and also like some armor stands uh, as representative of what you can buy from the villagers. So I, I like that design a lot better and I'm trying to uh, see how we can put some type of design on the outside here. You see I got like this little wave thing going on here at the moment, but uh, I'm trying to see if we can maybe make it a little bit better than just that. Maybe make like a little little chain pattern or something, chain link pattern. That could be cool. But uh, yeah, that's sort of what I'm aiming for right now. So I'll continue to work on this a little bit. Uh, I do want the inside to be mostly purple uh, stained clay though. But the outside design I have to work on quite a bit. I want to put a lot of depth into it and uh, a lot of work into the outside of this. So I'll be back once I'm done with this project. Alright everybody, so we got the enchantment shop done now. Uh, so this is what it looks like from the outside. Went with some sandstone and some uh, purple stained clay. Sounds like they're playing a little bit of music over here at ZAMR, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go on in here. So this is the enchanting shop here. Um, so let me just get you give you a tour here. So yeah, we got some signs up here. Ask about naming your tools. Only one emerald extra. It's called Eth Ethereal Enchanting is the name of this shop, by the way. Um, package deals on armor now available. You can see some of those package deals right down there. Uh, here we got some weapons enchantments, weapons enchants, right there. Uh, we got the fully functional uh, enchantment table here. So whenever we put villagers in here, they'll be able to step on this. And yeah, that'll uh, make this a fully um, maxed out enchant table. In here we got some books, we got some lapis lazuli. Um, obviously a stockpile here of lapis as well. Um, yeah, we have, like I said, we have some weapons, weapons in there already. Uh, down here we have miscellaneous enchants. Uh, we have tool enchantments right here. Got some tools in there. Armor enchantments right here. And then down here are the package deals for armor. So you got, you know, your super heavy, your medium, and then your lightweight uh, package in terms of pricing. Um, and also, yeah, protection. So this starts heavier and then it goes lighter down here. So that's it. Yeah, we're going to have villagers in there eventually, obviously, and then you can, you know, uh, yeah, interact with them in terms of, like, buying uh, bottles of enchanting or enchanted tools. So it should be pretty cool. It should be cool once we get the uh, villagers in here. You see we got a little, little bit of a skylight, skylight up there shining down, so that's, that's cool. And this enchantment room is all lit up with the glowstone. So yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. And then we got some paintings on the walls here too, so good stuff. So that is the enchanting room done. So I'm going to go ahead and head back to the base now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and eat something here. And what I want to do now is I actually want to make sure that the auto sorter does not overflow. It could already be overflowing. Because we got some villagers over here, these farmer villagers. Let's go take a look at them. They're just right over this way. These guys. These guys tirelessly work day after day, night after night. These guys work around the clock to uh, to give us carrots. This guy, the bottom guy gives us carrots. Next guy gives us potatoes. And there's a guy up there on top. Somebody's coming for me. Yep, that gives... Um, okay. That gives us uh, bread. So, yeah. I want to... Uh, want to get some... Uh, emeralds from the villagers in the trading center and so like I said those guys have been hard at work making that happen for us so let's go down and see how many carrots and potatoes we have I want to try and trade a lot of them away but it does take some time yeah it looks like we got there's ten double chests so ten double chests of carrots and potatoes five more double chests of bread and then we got at least at least three more double chests of carrots and potatoes here as well. So that's what, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 16 double chests that we have to trade away. Um, so we should be able to get a ton of emeralds from that. So let's go ahead and just uh, bring all this down, bring it up to the villager trading center and trade it all away into emeralds. Alright guys, so here we are at the Villager Trading Center. We are now ready to start trading, and this is the uh, the farmer we typically trade with. He's almost perfect. Well, he is perfect in terms of the potato. 
but he's almost perfect in terms of the carrot as well. And he also has really favorable trades for the pumpkin and also the melon. So yeah, pretty good farmer here. So this is who I trade with the most. And so let's see how many emeralds we can get from whoop, from this guy. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Alright guys, so I'm done trading away all my uh, potatoes and carrots to this farmer here, and we got eight stacks of emerald blocks. So that goes along with, you know, some stuff we got in here, and then we got a little bit more back over here in the house as well, I think. Let's go over there and double check. I'm just going to dump this off here anyway. So I'll just come through here, and yeah, we already got like like 20 double ch <laughs> double stacks here so just add that in there very nice okay fantastic so uh, now the only thing we have left to do is to go down and finish the mine shaft uh, so I'm gonna grab some polished andesite for that uh, we'll also need some spruce and some birch so I'll go ahead and grab some of that some of those woods and head on down there I'll finish up the mine shaft and then we'll do today's highlight channel Okay, everyone, so as you can see here, we got the rest of the mine shaft now filled out, so that is fantastic, looking pretty fine if I do say so myself. So, uh, today's highlighted channel is da -da -da -da, Evan Guthrie. So, uh, Evan Guthrie last episode said you should add some, uh, some games like parkour or um, arrow run to your, uh, to, uh, to Zara Zara, and I thought that was a pretty good idea. I particularly like the idea of arrow run. We could put that into like the the water park. So like we have like a a wall of dispensers that randomly fire at different times. And we have to run run past them and not get shot off into the water or something like that. So that could be kind of cool. We could incorporate that into the water park eventually. Um, so yeah, thanks for the idea, Evan. And this is your mine shaft. Let's see how you do against the other competitors. So I finished digging out Evan's mine shaft, and we got the following resources. So we got seven diamonds and over five stacks of coal, so a huge amount of coal. Uh, but those seven diamonds put him on top of the Fortune 3 leaderboard currently with seven total. And yeah, I think that's going to be all for me today, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and head back here. And uh, 1.9 snapshots are hopefully coming up very soon. Uh, I'm expecting them any week now, but I've been saying that for the last, like, ten weeks. So, <laughs> you never know. Uh, Jeb did recently put out this photo, though, of the dungeon generation. So they're working on a new dungeon for Minecraft. Be kind of cool to see what they put. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to be something in the overworld, uh, just from Jeb's tweet. Um, so that'll be cool to see a new overworld mob of some type. Uh, so let's go ahead and get back up to the house here. I want to show you guys the updated map uh, before I go. So I'll be right back uh, once I'm up there. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the updated maps here. So here is the theater right here, this little half dome here, uh, with the path beside it as well. Here is the enchantment shop, nice purple, purple square, looks kind of cool. And then of course, uh, let me just dig down here. Down here we got the jousting area with apparently red wood. That's weird. I guess that uh, yeah, the upper part of the wood texture must appear red on maps. That must be a bug or something. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, you can see the fence there and everything, and dirt surrounding it. So, yeah, looks pretty cool. I like it.
So, guys, that is it for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next time. So thanks for watching. This has been Cub Fan. Goodbye.